Now, wherever you work, it's important to know what the local malignant conditions are. What are the people in your area suffering from? And in class working in the UK at the moment, we've come up with British light chips, Polish blokes like sausages. British light chips, Polish blokes like sausages. And this, of course, is a mnemonic. And what it describes are the most common types of primary cancers diagnosed in the UK. So although the mnemonic is a bit funny, the diseases certainly aren't. The most common cancer in the UK is breast cancer, B. L is for lung cancer or bronchogenic cancers. So breast most common lung second most common and this is for all sexes so it's a bit frightening really although breast cancer is fairly rare in men breast cancer is still the most common single malignant primary diagnosed in the UK so breast first then lung the C is for colorectal cancer of the colon and rectum are very common and then the P is for the prostate gland this of, of course only occurs in, in men it's actually the most common primary tumour diagnosed in men now is the prostate cancer. So BLC, P, B is for bladder, bladder cancer. So breast, lung, colon, prostate, bladder. The next L is for lymphoma. So the L is actually non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And the S stands for stomach. So it's breast, lung, colon, prostate, bladder, lymphoma and stomach in that order. I know you can't really remember lists from podcasts, but we will just go down the next. So it's breast, lung, colon, prostate, bladder, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, stomach. In the UK, the next category is head and neck, then esophagus, then melanoma, then pancreas, then ovary, leukemia, kidney, body of the uterus, brain and central nervous system, multiple myeloma, cervix, liver and testicular. They're the most common primary cancers diagnosed in the UK, taking the population as a whole. Now in men the most common ones are prostate, lung, colorectal, bladder. They're the most common ones in men. And in women it's breast, colorectal, lung, ovary and body of the uterus. So they're the most common cancers diagnosed in the UK. And this brings us on to early recognition of cancers. The more early a malignant condition is recognised, the more treatable it is. At an early stage, if you catch a cancer early enough, it's very likely that it's going to be completely curable if it's at an early stage. The trick, of course, is catching it at an early stage. So we need to have a high index of suspicion for these common malignant diseases. And we need to teach people to report to healthcare professionals if they do suspect that they might have such a malignant disease. Because if we catch it early, we're probably going to be able to treat it. So let's think of some early warning signs of cancer. And the first one on the standard list is unusual bleeding or discharges. Now, hemorrhage is abnormal. It's a sign of disease or it's a sign of trauma. People shouldn't be bleeding from places. So if there's any unusual bleeding, that is suspect. So, for example, there could be bleeding from the nose that's unusual. Well, most times that's going to be completely benign. It's going to be disease of the blood vessels, but it should be checked out. And the cause of the bleeding should be identified by a suitable specialist. PR bleeding could be frank blood from the anus or it could be altered blood. It could be melina. Frank blood is most commonly piles. But again, it's worth checking out to make sure it's not the development of a cancer of the rectum. Melina could indicate some bleeding in the upper gastrointestinal tract, which again could just emphasize the word could have a malignant origin. The point really we're trying to make here is that abnormalities should be explained. We shouldn't say, oh, it's just that or it's just the other. This should be a definitive explanation and diagnosis. Blood in the urine is a classic example. 
there should not be any blood in the urine with the exception of menstrual contamination. If you do suspect menstrual contamination, test the urine again in two weeks' time when the woman is mid-cycle. In a man, blood in the urine is always going to be abnormal and should be explained. If that explanation turns out to be benign, then that's, that's good. If it turns out to be malignant, it could be an early sign and early treatment could be given. It's the same with hematemesis, the vomiting of blood, or hemoptysis, the coughing up of blood. It should be explained. So unusual bleeding is one thing. And another thing is an unusual discharge. A discharge could be from anywhere, really. It could be from a nipple. It could be from the vagina. It could be from the respiratory tract. If someone's got persistent cough and they're producing a lot of sputum. It could be that someone's suffering from repeated urinary tract infection. Because what happens when a tumour grows in a structure, especially if it's something that drains naturally, like the respiratory tract, it drains mucus naturally. The mucus is produced and it moves up the mucociliary clearance system and it's coughed out. But if there's a tumour in the way, that forms a physical obstruction. And behind the tumour, you're going to get an area of stasis and that's going to predispose to infection. Infection can generate pus and that can be seen as a discharge or in the case of the lungs of a coughing up of infected sputum. So unusual infections or frequent infections can be an indicator that there is an anatomical abnormality caused by a malignant disease. It's a possibility to bear in mind. And sores which do not heal are another possible indication. Now wounds are supposed to heal. There are many natural mechanisms that facilitate wound healing. And if a wound is not healing, then there is a reason for that. And the most common reason that wounds don't heal is probably infection. But some wounds don't heal because they become malignant, especially in chronic wounds. So a non-healing chronic wound could indicate malignant change. The next one on the list is changes in a bowel habit or bladder habits. Now, change in bowel habits could indicate that something has gone wrong systemically. More likely, it's going to indicate that something has gone wrong within the colon itself. So if someone has regular bowel habits and these change or the consistency of the stools change, then again, don't alarm the patient. Don't say you've probably got cancer, but it's always worth checking out. These things should be explained. Well, an obvious one is if someone feels a thickening of tissue or they feel a lump, something which shouldn't be there. The obvious place is to feel the sort of breast lumps in the testes, in the skin. You can see changes that might indicate something like a melanoma. It might be possible to palpate a tumour in a muscle, a rhabdosarcoma. It might be possible to palpate lymph glands, swollen lymph nodes. Lymph node swelling could indicate drainage and development of malignant cells from a regional malignancy into the lymph nodes, or it could indicate a problem with the lymph nodes themselves. So sometimes it's possible to feel or see something directly from the surface of the body. Nagging cough or hoarseness is another indicator that something might be going wrong. Hoarseness is that rough sound to the voice. That could be some pharyngeal problem, but classically that can indicate a cancer of the vocal cords or a cancer developing in the larynx. Chronic cough could be an indicator of chronic respiratory infection, which as we've already said, can be an indicator of early bronchogenic cancers. We've already alluded to skin changes, but obvious changes in a wart or a mole can indicate malignant transformation. So for example, if a mole starts growing or there's a change in the pigmentation of that mole, then that should arouse our suspicions. And the last one on this, this standard list is ingestion difficulties and difficulties in swallowing. Swallowing difficulties could indicate a developing tumour in the esophagus or upper part of the stomach. So they're just specific examples really, but what we're saying is that if anything's wrong, that should be explained. 
And if you can't explain it, then pass it on to someone who can explain it. Pass it on to specialists who can hopefully give the patient and indeed us reassurance that there's no malignant disease present. But if there is, treatment can be offered at an early stage, greatly increasing the probability of a good prognosis and favourable outcome. And favorable out